how was, how was that here today? Good morning, everyone. Welcome I saw him yesterday. to our world. Yeah. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning weekly Torah class on the portion of the week, usually. Today is, uh, we're gonna, instead of doing the portion of the week, we will discuss the particular day we are in, or, or on, which is the first day of the month of El. It's a new month, and it's an important month. The month that precedes the, whole, the uh, holy days, the high holy days, <coughs> Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And El was very, a very spiritually charged month. It's not a regular month. In order to appreciate and understand the significance of this month, let me preface it by saying the following. There is a verse... Oh, speaking of holiday, here we There's a verse in the uh, Torah and the Prophets. Mm-hmm. King Solomon says, Ashcheni acharecha narutza, draw me, and I will... Uh, Pursue you, and Haviyani Hamelech Hadorov, bring me, O King, into your. The King has brought me into his inner chambers. And our sages tell us that this that verse is a verse that uh, refers to the month, to the holiday of Pesach and Shavuos. What happened on Pesach? On Pesach, Hashem initiated the whole process of the exodus he came the night of Pesach <coughs> to, e- <coughs> to Egypt and he revealed himself in a very 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 uh, lofty way he revealed the essence of his existence and that brought about that drew the Jewish people out of Egypt out of their terrible exile and then he, they began to count the 29 days of the, the 49 days of the Omer and then came the giving of the Torah and Shavuos so it began with Hashem drawing them Moshcheni, Hashem drew them out of Egypt then they counted the 20, not 49 days of the Omer that was their pursuing Hashem because what's the counting of the Omer perfecting yourself and so on and then God brought them into the inner chambers of his <coughs> of his uh, existence, of his realm, which was the holiday of Shavuos. That's one process. In other words, what do we have? The summation of that is that Pesach happened, <coughs> or the revelation, the process, the <coughs> entire exodus, started from above. We spoke about this yesterday a little that a God initiated everything. What we call in the vernacular of Kabbalah and Hasidis, Isarusa de la Eila, an arousal from above. But that has its limits. It's a good thing, it's a very, very powerful thing when God suddenly reveals himself to you in, a, in a maybe undeserved, you didn't deserve it, you didn't prepare for it, but he suddenly has this incredible, you feel this closeness suddenly. And that inspires you. Inspires you. And that's what happened Pesach and Shavuos. In the high holidays, an El and Rosh Hashanah were told it, it's not, it's a different system. It's a different process. The process of El, which makes up the word or the acronym for another verse in the of King Solomon, he says, "Anila daidi vedaidi li." That's the acronym for El. What does Anila daidi vedaidi li mean? El is Aleph, Lamed, Yivav, Lamed, right? Ani is the Aleph, Ledaidi is the Lamed, Vedaidi is uh, Vedaidi is the Vav, Li is the Lamed. So it's El. What does these four words mean? Anila daidi vedaidi li. So over here is the opposite of Pesach. Over here, it starts, Hashem wants us to make the first move. We have to initiate this relationship. 
in the vernacular of Kabbalah and Hasidus again, it's called Isarusa du Latata, an arousal from above. That means Hashem is not going to wake you up. He's not really revealing himself. You are to, you, you have to figure this out on your own, so to say. You have to f- contemplate, think. It's the end of the year. Hashem is going to be judging us in the beginning of the next year on Rosh Hashanah. Where am I? What's my station? Where am I in re- my relationship with God? Am I doing what I have to? Am I not? Where am I missing? Where am I strong? And so on. This is an, uh, the arousal from below. We have to do the waking up, so to say. He's not going to wake us up. We have to wake ourselves up. That's the first two words. Anilo daidi. I am to my beloved, meaning I am to my beloved. I reach out, I start, I initiate to become close to my beloved, meaning Hashem. Then comes the Daidili. Hashem then responds, the, my beloved unto me. That's Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur usually, right? So the, here's the opposite. On Pesach it starts with Hashem revealing himself, scooping us out of Egypt, and then we begin to respond. Over here's the other way around. We begin, and Hashem then responds. Each one, each of these process, processes, processes have their own advantages and disadvantages. What is the advantage of Hashem starting? Hashem reveals Himself; it's unbelievably powerful. It's not limited to your, to your what do you call it? To your uh, limitations. He's on His terms. It's a different relate. It's a different ball game altogether it is incredibly potent it's incredibly spiritual it's very very strong so that's the advantage of that but there's also a a disadvantage the disadvantage of that is (coughs) the disadvantage is that what happens when God reveals himself to you does it ever happen that you suddenly get an inspiration from nowhere it happens, right? How long does that last? Cool. Very good. It doesn't really last long. Yeah, it's it's a uh, comes and goes. It's 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 uh, fleeting. Why is it fleeting? Because it didn't come from inside. It came from outside. It was superimposed. It's not yours. You can't claim it. You can't take ownership of it. God did it for you. When God does it for you, so unless you really grab onto it and run with it, it has the the, the uh, it has the danger. There's a danger that it dissipates as quick as it came it can go. that's how fast it can go it's there to get you maybe to wake you up as they say and now you got to get going with the, your own initiation with your own powers with your own you know you have to hold on to it it's not easy to hold on to such a thing that's the disadvantage now let's talk about the, <coughs> the other process which is what we initiate and Hashem responds and Rosh Hashanah What's that disadvantage? Again, there's an advantage and a disadvantage. What's the the disadvantage? We'll start with the disadvantage. The disadvantage is it's limited to your capacity. You're waking yourself up. You're beginning this and that. You're reaching out to God. Okay, so it's a human being with the human with the human limitations, the human frailties, reaching out. What are you already? What what you know? What is it already? It's it's a poor it's a poor sacrifice, so to say, right? Uh, a very, very limited, uh, what do you call it? A limited p- power, a limited potency. It doesn't have the magic of a revelation from above. The advantage, however, is that if you made it happen on your own, this is going to last. This came from within you. If you take ownership of that, that's your doing. It may be limited, and it is limited. It may be very poor, maybe, you know, lacking, but it's yours. And when it's yours, it's there. It's not superimposed. So it doesn't have the disadvantage of it, it fleets, it goes, it, come and go. it doesn't come and go. It's the, you made it happen, it's yours, it's your, it's your advantage. It's yours to, to keep. So it may be le- limited, but it's, but it's reliable. It's a reliable inspiration that's not going to go away in a day that's what God wants during this time of the year generally speaking we're told that Rosh Hashanah 
is the new year for nature. To the natural realm, the natural order. Nisan, the month of Passover, is also a new year. But it's a new year of the miraculous order. Miracles come from above. You can't create a miracle. Nature, we're part of nature. We're not part of the miraculous reality. So again, when you arouse yourself, it's a, a, it's, it's a wake up from below, and you initiate a response from God, that's already a long lasting, a long lasting uh, inspiration. But here's the interesting thing. What I just say that the acronym for Elul is Anila Daidi Vedaidili. So in the month of El we get busy with us reaching out, initiating, waking ourselves up and becoming prepared for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur with our own arousal, right? That's Anila Daidi. I am to my beloved. I'm reaching out to my beloved. When is Vedaidi Li? My beloved responds to me when? Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So the Alter Rebbe asks a very important question. Why is V'day Dili, those two words, part of the acronym of the word Elul? If it's not really part of Elul, it's part of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which is already next month. If the response from God that we are initiating and God responds, right? When does that response happen? Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, not in Elul. So why are those two words also in the word of Elul? The, the letter has four words, four letters. Anila Daidi, I am to my beloved, and also my beloved is unto me. The response is apparently happening in Elul as well. While it's not true, it's really happening on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So we got a, a, a conundrum here. What are those two words doing in the part of El, in the month of El? It's not part of the, it shouldn't be part of the acronym of the month of El. In Torah, everything is precise. There's no, you know, mistakes, obviously. So if those two letters are included in the month of El, which represents the response from God to us, or some kind of God reaching out to us, why is it in the month of El? That's not happening in the month of El. The question is an important question. You wouldn't have thought of it, but he did. <laughs> That's what we're doing. That's the Anil Adedi. That's the first two letters. So then he's initiating. No, he's he's responding to us preparing. When is he responding? In the month of El? One Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Let's let's give, let me give you the Al Tarebbe's answer. Al Tarebbe answers as follows. This became known as one of the most famous parables in all of Hasidic philosophy, known as the King is in the field. Ever heard of that parable, that concept? The king in the field? Hamelach Basadeh. What does he say? It says like this, the month of El can be compared to a king. A king who went on a journey. Where is a, where is a king usually found? In his kingdom, in his palace. He sits in his royal chair, in his royal throne, and he has servants, and you know, it's a whole... But once in a while, he goes out on a, on a journey, on a trip, Right? To enjoy himself, maybe. So where does he go? There he goes out, into the woods, into the forest. Who knows where he goes? But eventually he's finished his trip, he comes back home. Where does he come back home? First he has to go to the outskirts of the city, then he comes into the city, right? So what's up? what is on the outskirts of the city? The fields. So the king comes to the field first. And then, on the way into the city, back to his palace. Now the process custom is, the process is that when he goes, out, when he's out there on the outskirts he gives an opportunity for everyone, no matter who you are to go out and greet him in the field he'll say hello to you, he'll wave to you, he'll say shalom aleichem, he'll give you his hand, he'll even take a selfie with you whatever it may be and he smiles and he's happy and he's giving everyone a nice cheerful countenance but then, when he goes back into his then that, that opportunity comes to an end, goes back into the city, back into his palace. Back into his palace, you can't follow him into his palace. 
to be a, to go into the palace, you have to be already one of his inner circle. And the further he gets in the palace, he goes into his inner chambers. It's if he gets you know more limited and more limited. Whoever can go in there, only the really important people can go in, right? So that's the parable. You had a question. Yeah, the question is: You talk about a king. How does somebody back in those days become a king? I have no idea. I mean, is it handed down? Probably from father from to family, son. Family yeah. to family to family. Probably. Or is it father to son? Is yeah. it the most powerful person physically becomes a king? I, I mean, think it went in the family. The prince became the king. Yeah. Eventually, when the father died, the prince took over. I'm thinking, probably that's how it went. There was no such thing as voting back no, then. No, no, kingdom is not voting. <clears throat> it doesn't go by vote. I was just curious how someone becomes a king. Yeah. We don't have kings today, so I, you know, it's hard to really imagine. You could be a king. But anyway, so let's get back to the parable. Daltarebbe explains Rosh Hashanah with the Elul and in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur with this parable. All year round, Hashem is in the higher realms, so to say. It's hard to get them. It's like a king in his palace. Certainly on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But in the month of El, Hashem comes out to us in the field. He makes himself completely accessible in the field. Actually, the Alter Rebbe asks a, a, an important question. As a preface to this, to this parable, I asked one question. Why is the word... The last two letters, part of El, right? That was one question. Al Tareb asks another question. He says, "What's the power of El? It says the El, the, the, the month of El, the, is a time of grace and compassion of God towards the people, towards us." It says, in fact, he uses the Kabbalistic terms that is the month in which the thirteen attributes of mercy are very much revealed and functioning, so to say. It's, 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 it's in the world, so. Similar to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. What's Yom Kippur? We say Hashem, Hashem, El Kel, Rachum, Vechanun. Those are the 13 attributes of mercy. How many times do we say that in Yom Kippur? Many, many times. Because that's the day that there's a great revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy. So the Alter Rebbe says, if that's the case, that the whole Elul this is revealed, the whole 30 days of Elul, why aren't they a holiday? It's, what, what makes a day a holiday? What makes a day, a special day in the month and of the year, a holy day? Because there's a higher energy of spirituality in the world, which makes the world on a higher level, and therefore it's a holiday. It's when you're not allowed to work, you're not allowed to do certain things. It is unbecoming when you're on a high, such a high level of spiritual <clears throat> godliness in the world that you should be a little more reserved, more prepared, more holy, and so on. So he says, if it indeed, in the month of El, there's a revelation of the 13 attributes of mercy, similar to Yom Kippur, why are these whole months not a holiday? It should be a holy day, a holy month. I always contend that the women probably wouldn't be that happy with that, but the men would. You know, they'd like to take off a month from work. I don't know about cooking three meals a day, you know, that's a different story holiday meals for a straight month you would have a, a, a demonstration the women's the women's march <laughs> they wouldn't be that happy but the question that the Alter Rebbe asks is a real question why aren't these days holidays if there's such a spiritual energy in the world which elevates us and makes us on a different level so he answers with this parable of the king in the field he says there's a difference between the king in his palace and the king in the field. When he goes in the, when he's in the palace, he's wearing his royal robes and his crown, and it's got the whole enter, you know, the whole all the trappings around it. And you walk in the air, there's a sense of awe that yeah, there's, a, there's an awe that it's, it's awe inspiring. When the king is out in the field, how does he go out to his trip to the field with his crown on his head? He's not going around there with his crown. He comes out like our commoner. He looks like me and you. He looks like me and you. But he is the king. So it doesn't have... So it's the 13 attributes of mercy. That powerful revelation is happening. But it lacks the 
the super <coughs> elevated state of the holiday the, as a king is in his palace. It's the same king, but without all the trappings. So he's coming down to our level. Instead of bringing up us up to his level, which makes it a holiday, a holy day, he comes down to our level, so to say. And he says, I'm coming to where, the way you are, in your realm, in your, real, in your reality. What does that do? When you see the king comes over here, and the king came into this room wearing short pants, so to say, imagine that. What would that do? I mean, we don't have a king. But imagine the Tsar in Russia. Well, they had real kings. So they, the Tsar was a man with a crown, I assume, the Queen of England, yeah? Imagine the Queen of England would come in there wearing overalls. She would walk in, you know, hello, you know, yeah, no big deal, you know, take it was, it was a little knapsack, you know, looking like me and you. What would, what would be the feeling? What would be the feeling? It would be important, you know, you'd want to come see her perhaps, but it wouldn't be as magical as if she comes with the whole, why do people love watching the royal wedding? Because the beautiful bride and kin and, 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 and the, 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 because it's just another wedding, right? No, there's a whole, there's a whole happening. But imagine that wasn't happening. The queen was there and the king was there, and every, but it's just a regular chuppah, you know, she's wearing a, a dress like everyone else. It doesn't have that, man. No one would watch it. Right? But imagine she came into your house like that. That would be impressive. You'd be, okay, it's, it's something. It's not nothing. That's what's happening in El. That's why it's not a holiday. It lacks that magic. So it's a regular day, but God does come to us. What's the purpose of him coming out to the field during this month? What's the purpose of it? To wake us up? Well, let's, let's compare it to Pesach. Um, Pesach night, he revealed himself and got the Jews out of Egypt. And, you know, they, they were on a whole different level. And today, he's coming out into the field. What's the difference? It's a world of a difference. Over there, the revelation was magical, uninitiated by the Jewish people, undeserving by the Jewish people. It came strictly from above, down to us, superimposed. It was incredible. You were overwhelmed by it. You got, you know, it was a tremendous, tremendous spiritual experience. El lacks that. Is there a tremendous spiritual experience in El? Do you feel more spiritual today or on Rosh Hashanah? When do you feel more spiritual? On Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because Rosh Hashanah, the king is in his palace. It's a whole different revelation. It's a whole different reality. So why is he coming out to the field? He's coming out to the field to give you a tickle. I'm here. Now it's up to you. It's not really an arousal from above. It doesn't, it doesn't contain within it this magical awakening that, wow, something was way, like a Pesach night. So could you say Hashem is initiating this? He's the first one. He's coming out to the field first. Is that an initiation from above? To some degree. It is something from above. He's, he's doing it. He's coming to us in the field. Imagine the minute the first of El Lapeer arrives, he's in the field with us. That, start, that process begins. He starts that process. But because he's coming without the whole entourage, without the whole, the whole magical trappings of the palace, with that whole awe-inspiring presence, so when we react to that, knowing that he's in the field. So it gives us a little tip tickle. But it's not a full wake up from above. <clears throat> Therefore, when we arouse ourselves in the month of El, it can still be considered that this is beginning as an initiation from below. It's still our doing. Because we weren't so inspired by above. I came out to the field, that's inspirational. It's not that inspirational. He's with his overalls, he's looking like me and you. There's no, there's no magic to it. It's something. You understand what I'm trying to say? You understand what I'm saying? It's not a holiday because it doesn't have that magical revelation from above. 
the king is, so to say, in here in the field, concealed in his regular clothing, in his regular garments. But he doesn't look like a king. He doesn't look like a king. He doesn't give off that inspiring feeling that you're around the king. But when any normal person knows that the king is in the field, he's right outside in the parking lot, you're going to go out. I don't care what he looks like. You look like a pauper. If it's the king, I'm going out to see him. If you have a little faith, if you have something up here, you would go out. But it's such a weak, it's a ch- such a weak, or such a low level um, inspiration from above that it's possible that some people will even miss it. They may even miss it. Kings in the field. I don't see a whole entourage. I don't see anything. I'm not going out. I don't see the, the, the I don't see the. What do you call it? The big chariots, the big horses, the white big horses. I don't see any of it. He's not going out. They tell the story of the Rushina. The uh, <coughs> of Yisrael of Rushin. Great tzaddik. He was the grandson of the Magid of Mezrich. And he once came to a city looking like a pauper. He hid it. He was disguised. Showed up to a city. No one knew who he was back then. There was no like there was no uh, p- pictures of people. You didn't know. A, a, a rabbi came to a foreign town. You never saw him before. You know. You never saw his picture. You never saw anything. So they didn't know who he was. Came himself. Comes to the shul. And back then, the way it was, every Friday night there were poor people in the synagogue. They needed a place to eat, so they would line up by the by the uh, by the door. When the people went out from Davening, they would take come, you come with me, the next guy, you come with me, and that's how it went. So Rabbi Rudrushina was standing there like everyone else, and he went to a Jew who invited him. Before you know it, the town found out that this is no simple person. This is the great Rabbi Yisrael of Rushin. So the richest man in town heard that the great Sadiq is there. No, 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 no. So, see what? He was at this person's house. Am I getting the story right? Anyway, he finished the Shabbos. And then he came another Shabbos. Before he left that first time, came known and everyone realized he was there so they came to say hello to him and you know, so rich people also came and said the rich man told him you know next time you come stay by me I'd like to invite you and he came this time he didn't look at him because he didn't uh, next time he came to town this time he already came as the Rujan Rebbe he came as the great holy tzaddik of Rujan with his whole with his horses and buggy and the whole entourage and the whole thing and he decided he's going to stay by the person he was staying by last time he was kind enough to invite him when he didn't know who he was the rich man found out that he's in town again so he sent a message to him that you know please come stay by me I have a whole house ready for you the servants you'll have all the honors yeah, yeah, the way it should be so the Rajana said to the messenger that came, he said, told his attendant, take all the horses and all the chariots and take everything and send it to the to this rich man. Let they're gonna stay there. I'm staying here. And that's what he did. So the rich man was slighted. So he asked the Rajana what what happened? What uh, what was that? I realized that it wasn't me that you wanted. When I came without all this, you weren't interested. When I only when I came with all it is, were you interested? So what really took you was the horses and the white horses and the buggies. So I sent you the white horses and the buggy. That's what inspired you. <laughs> when I was here without all that, you didn't pay attention to me, right? So what you paid attention was the horses and the buggy and the fan, the whole entourage. I sent you the entourage and with with the horses and the chariots, right? 
There are certain people that the king comes out to the field without the entourage, without the whole thing. They're not interested. It doesn't inspire them. They, 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 they get caught up by the surroundings, the trappings. But we're talking about, you know, you have a little seichel, you understand that the king is in the field. It's not a holiday. It's not with that magic. So it's not, it, it's not enough of a revelation to have a, it's where you can consider it a full-blown arousal from above. It's not. But it is something. He gives you a little bit of a, a little push, a little bit of a push, it is a tap on the shoulder. It's Elul, I'm here. The king is in the field. You want to come out? I'll see you. So, so this answers both questions. Why is it not a holiday? It's not a holiday because of that. And also, why are the two last letters, Vav and Lamed, rep- representing Hashem, initiating us, start still part of the month of El? Because there is something going on in El, El from above down as well. It's the king in the field. He does come out. So there is all four letters happening, all four con- both concepts are happening in El. We're initiating and the God's also doing some initiating. He's coming down to us and we're coming down up to him. But what is the first two letters? Anila Daidi. Re- the, the emphasis of this month is our reach out to him. The fact that he came out into the field that gave us a little tickle, <clears throat> that's nice, but it's not considered that it's all his doing. It's not his doing. When you respond to that, it's your doing. And this is crucial in life. It's crucial in life. We need to, and like I said before, the advantages and the disadvantages. When we, res- when we work in the month of El, starting today, today is the first day of El, we blew the chauffeur. It's a different kind of month. Although it's a regular month, you're going to go to work, you're going to have, well, you know, those things are regular, right? Because it's the king in the field. The king is here, but he's in the field clothing. He's on our terms. So the wake-up call is not as powerful. And therefore, when we serve God as a result of anything that happens this month, it's con- considered that we are the ones that are doing the full initiation. It's our, we're the first, we're doing the first move which is crucial in our relationship with God. There's just so much God can take you by the hand and cradle you and, 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 and take you like a baby. At some point, you've got to stand on your own two feet. And standing on your own two feet means... Standing on your own two feet means taking your relationship with God serious enough that whether there's a magical revelation of the Pesach night or there isn't a magical revelation of the Pesach night I'm, I'm part of this process and that's what this month is about the next month we say it's the month of stock taking it's the month of preparation for Rosh Hashanah to do tshuva yes it is and you're not going to have any magical inspirations this month the king will be in the field is strong enough but it's not as great as Pesach and all the other times where it becomes a holiday it's a real full-fledged thing because he can't do that for us. In this particular case, around Rosh Hashanah, he needs us to take charge. Is this relationship real or is it not? So sometimes you need a tap on the back, but that's it. That's all he's going to do. The king in the field is a tap on the back. It's not this, you know, this thing that he just whoosh, overtakes us and overwhelms us with incredible inspiration. We have no choice. You must be inspired. You can get lost in the month of El, not even real, the king is in the field. So if we do respond to the month, to the king in the field now, it's because he is, it's because we're big enough and mature enough to appreciate this relationship. And it can be considered a full-fledged Isarusa de Latata, an awakening from below, which will be, which will last and it will be reliable it may not be as potent as if it's Hashem doing all the work for us, but it's much more reliable, much more uh, durable, and much more our own. And in life, till something becomes your own, it's not, it's not, it doesn't really exist. So is the film that you put on your own, 
Do you do this because you want to do this? This has really become part of who you are? Or it's superimposed from above? It's a big question. A shab is your own? Or is it superimposed from above? What I mean by superimposed from above, the inspiration is coming from outside of you, not within. If the inspiration wasn't there, you probably maybe wouldn't do Shabbos. Or, inspiration, no inspiration, this is my mitzvah, I'm doing this, because that's who I am. That's Elul, that's the month of Elul and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And when you prepare yourself properly in Elul, you can, you can be sure that when God does fully respond with the full magic on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, it's going to be a whole different experience. What's going to happen then is you will then become a very important person and you'll be invited into the palace when God goes back into the palace. So you will now appreciate the full-fledged revelation but it will be on your terms because you have stepped up and made yourself ready and capable of absorbing internally and personally such high-level spirituality. That didn't happen on Pesach. But on Rosh Hashanah it does, hopefully. But only if we prepare ourselves on Yom Kippur. Uh, 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 in the month of Elul. And in order to get us, to get, make us step, he comes out to the field. To give us a little bit of a... a little wake up. A little tap on the shoulder, so to say. So till still, when you start working in the month of El, saying the three extra chapters of Tehillim, blowing the shofar, being a davening this, this month, every day, and doing it right, that's your doing. And believe me, when you come to Rosh Hashanah and keep after a full month of good preparation, you, you, let's talk on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We'll meet the day after Yom Kippur and we'll, you tell me how that compared to the year before or 10 years, or, or 10 years before. Then, the awakening from above which will happen on Rosh Hashanah, the full-fledged revelation will be absorbed internally. Both advantages will happen. You won't, you won't be missing any. There will be no disadvantage at all. And that's what we achieve. That's what we aspire to. So now, go take on the month of El. Let's put on film, those that didn't put on film yet. And let's get started with a whole new energy, a whole new month an awakening from below because God is right there in the field waiting for us. A good chedish to everyone. Thank you.